Oh, I didn't see you come in, man. Sorry. <laughs> it's nice to see you, though. Uh, welcome to part two. Actually, part two of three. I ran into a bunch of surprises on this little parlor guitar. Well, not a bunch, but a couple of unexpected things that I did not uh, see upon initial inspection. I should have looked at it closer. Uh, I put the string, uh, the nut's okay, the nut, nut dried and is in place and it's all good and dandy. It looks like it's going to be about the right height too. But I uh, put the bridge back on it and strung it up to pitch and I was going to take measurements here at the 12th fret so we can determine how much we need to take off of this bridge back here to lower the action. And that's as far as I've got and it's, it's been two days, maybe three days. Uh, well, I don't know how long it'll be when, by the time you see this video. I ran into some other stuff. You know how life gets in the way. Just had some things I had to take care of. Got them took care of now. I had a couple of instruments here that I needed to get out of here. I got those fixed and they're gone. But, uh, show you what we ran into. I, hopefully you're going to be able to see this. This uh, fingerboard is separating from the neck. Can you see that? It's separating from the body, the top, too. Can you see it? <laughs> okay. Let me get to... Yeah, I don't know, man. I hope you can see that. I hope the camera gets that. Now, if I flip the guitar over... Well, I'm going to have to turn it over this way so the light will hit it. There you can see where the fingerboard is coming off loose from the top. And, uh... It's coming loose from the the neck itself right there if you can see that so I gotta take the strings all off of it now and get glue in there I can hold this up to that really really bright light over there that you can't see you, know, you can see its effects that's a 500 watt light there I can hold this guitar up to that light and I can actually see light between the fingerboard and the neck right here I don't see any between the fingerboard and the top of the guitar down in this area. I don't see any light there, but there's some huge openings there that need glue in them. But the one right here, the crack right here on both sides, I can hold it up to that really bright light and, and angle it around, move it around a little bit, and I can see light through there, telling me that's open all the way across the, uh, all the way across here. So, uh, and I don't have it all the way up to pitch yet either, and that showed up. So I'm going to have to take the strings off of it and get in there, get some glue in there. And I'm probably, I don't know yet, if I'll use a pipette like this and try to get a uh, tight bond in there. It's an awful tiny crack. The neck looks good. The neck back here, the block and the heel and everything, it doesn't look like anything's moving there. It's just this area right here, the, the fingerboard, separating from the neck and the top here. That has to be fixed because tuned up to pitch, there's going to be even more pressure. I've got it tuned one step down right now, but I can really see that good. And I'm blind. So what I'm going to do there is, uh, like I say, I'm going to loosen up the strings. I might use uh, thin viscosity CA glue on that because, man, that stuff is thinner than water. And it'll go down in there and... And in places you would never ever be able to get, you know, a glue as thick as tight bond is. And it's good. The CA glue is good. It'll hold that. I mean, I use it all the time on stuff like that. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do because it, it works so well. It's just fill those. Just uh, pump the CA glue down in there and let it run wherever it will. And then clamp on the back of the heel right here and this area where I can see through it. Put a clamp there, maybe put a C clamp up on the inside and a block of wood here and shove this whole fingerboard extension down tighter until that glue sets up. It doesn't look like it's moved anymore. You know, looking at that, it looks like somebody just did a crappy job putting the uh, fingerboard back on it. The rest of it looks fine all the way up the neck. It's just from here down. But I'm going to decide on that in a few minutes. Right now, I'm going to bring you in closer. And we're going to work on this crack a little bit. Now, 
I've showed this before, but I'll show it to you again because a lot of new subscribers coming along and probably didn't see it before. Take a, a, a razor blade, or in my case, it's a utility knife blade, and it's a little vise up here. I think you can see it. Lay that blade. Oh, let me find something here. Let's say this is metal, okay? Say this hammer is this handle's metal. Lay that razor blade in an angle on a piece of steel and jerk it across this, you know, at an angle across that piece of steel several times. And what that'll do is create a burr on the end of the very edge of the blade, okay? Then I've wrapped uh, tape around both ends, if you can see. Yeah. Yeah. I left only the middle of the blade exposed. Now that's going to allow me to scrape over that crack and uh, you can feel it, you know, quite a lot. I can scrape over it this way. The tape will, you know, prevent the blade from making any contact with the top. The only part that's going to touch is the highest part, which is going to be in the center of the blade here. Let me just bring the camera over here, bring you in a little bit closer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It'll make more sense. Hold on. Obviously you want to be very careful when you're doing this, okay? Now, the burr I've created on this, I have pointing that way, away from me. I don't know why the camera's doing that. Maybe it was me. I don't know. Anyways, the crack is filled with glue, and I'm just going to lay this. I'm going to run it along that crack with a slight angle to the blade. If you notice, I'm not coming straight down. I want to angle that blade this way or this way because it cuts better when you do that. You can see what it's taken off there. I think you can see it, yeah. Now, I don't want to go very much with this because I do not want to cut any, uh, burn any into the finish any more than we have to doing this. But it'll just make it uh, less apparent. You won't feel it so much either. Now you can see, that's ten times better already. You can't even feel it anymore. And you could feel, you know, an awful place there before. That's plenty enough right there. Just uh, wanted to show you new guys that trick. If you hadn't seen it before, you know, you can level a crack. If I was refinishing this guitar, um, I would go more with that until you know you could not feel I can still feel it a tiny bit but I'd go over it until you could not feel anything at all and I'd fill it with something besides glue but that's cool we're fixed we're good on the crack now uh, but like I say we got new cracks up here on the neck so uh, let me re-angle the camera here and we will uh, deal with these uh, cracks around the fingerboard Figure out what we're going to do yeah, with that. The battery fall is out. Okay, uh, I've decided to go with CA glue as I said. I had to make a run out and I got batteries and some good, uh, what is it? Clover Valley Purified Drinking Water. Love that stuff, man. Drink a lot of water. Show sure do. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pause the camera for a few minutes, see what all clamps. Where you at, man? Where are you? See what all clamps and things I'm going to need. I'll find the glue and uh, figure out what's going to take place here. And I'll bring you right back as soon as I know something. Let me just show you this before we go any farther. Why the tape, may you ask? See, I've got uh, tape all along that crack. What I'm going to do is put that thin viscosity CA glue in here. Cyanoacrylate glue, the thin is thinner than water. That stuff will run everywhere, man. And if I don't put something over this, it's going to run completely through there and out the other side because I'm going to I'm going to glue it with it setting up this way. 
so that glue can run down in there. The tape's going to stop it from running all over the finish and everywhere else. And then, when that sets up, I'm not going to use any uh, accelerator on it. I don't like the stuff I said before. I just like to let it dry naturally. But when I fill this all up with glue and clamp it, wait till that sets up, then I'll come back here, take the tape off and the clamps, and I'll fill this side up with glue. You know, in places, in case it didn't run all the way through, uh, I know it's going to right here in this area because, like I say, I could see light through there. So I'm sure that's it's going to come through there. I don't think it will down here. I'm just taking the you know safety precaution in case it does. But like I say, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the glue in on this upper side, let it run down in there, uh, have the clamps and everything ready to tighten up once the glue's in there. And then I'll have to leave it alone again until that glue sets up. Probably will come back uh, tomorrow or sometime. Take the tape off, take the clamps off, and uh, see if we can get any glue in this side of it and let it run this way. I won't have to tape this other side up because it's going to be full of glue that we're getting ready to put in it right now. And here we go. This is just to show you, give you an idea of what you're looking at here. It's about as close as I think I'm going to be able to get you, folks. I know you probably can't see very much, but, and I do apologize for that. But you got to work kind of fast with this stuff. have a mirror on the bottom so I can watch for any glue to uh, seep through the other side okay Well, it's filling up. And that's all I want to go with that. Because like I say, we want to tighten the clamps up fairly quick on it. But that stuff tends to set up rather quickly. seeing very much I know I've lost the remote here we go and there's what it looks like so uh, hold on just a minute I gotta wipe clean this glue tip up so now we don't have to worry about being able to see light between the fingerboard and the uh, the body or, or the neck there's the mirror I had a mirror underneath the uh, Thing so I could see the bottom of it in case any of this uh, thin glue did seep through it. None got through. The tape did its job. As you can see no glue got through there. And uh, I could see this side right up through there. That corner is what I'm talking about. I was watching through the mirror. I don't think you can see it because of the clamp. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe there you can. This corner in, in here where the neck meets the side, that's the corner I was watching. And no glue got through there, none got through here because of the tape. And that's exactly what we wanted to happen. So now I'll wait, let that set up. I don't want to, you know, uh, accelerate it or anything. Just let it dry on its own and I'll come back here. Take the tape off, take the clamps off. And we'll do the same thing again on the bottom side where the tape is now. If 
You know, it may have ran through there and ran right up again the tape, and the tape stopped it, and then there's no crack there anymore. Hopefully, if that's what happened, good, <laughs> you know. But if it didn't, I'll take the tape off, and I'll put glue in there. In fact, I might. Well, no, I'm going to let that dry. I was going to say flop it over and do it now, but that stuff is so thin, man. And if it's not set up yet, it'll run out, <laughs> you know. So I'm going to watch it pretty close here for the next little bit. Just make sure it doesn't seep out anywhere on the body. And I guess it'll be part three before we bring the action down and you get to hear this thing. Uh, next part. The next part after this one. We're going to get to hear her sing. Talk to some collectors about this. could be a very, very old guitar. Uh, Regal made these things... I found them online as far back as 1915, and uh, they had a, the older ones like this had this kind of tailpiece on it. Years later on, they put, uh, you know, they had like a hinge right here and two bars, one come up this side and one come up this side. Two bars that came up and held this piece, a bar that went across where the strings connected. Uh, that was one of the later ones. I think that was in the 30s, maybe the 20s or 30s, that they started using those tailpieces instead of these. Um, it doesn't have any rosette of any kind around the sound hole, which also tells me that it's extremely old. Um, there's several things. The bracing inside, that funky brace I told you that runs like from here. Let's see, yeah, from right there down at an angle. It doesn't run straight across this way. It runs down at an angle. They stopped doing that in like the 30s, I think. So, you know, there's a good possibility this thing is extremely old. Now, I had somebody ask me what kind of wood it was. And I really don't know. The kind of finish they have on there, you can look at it yourself. Maybe if someone knows anything about these guitars or what kind of wood that is. The neck is a darker wood. I don't know if the camera will get that. Or, like I say, it's been, the fingerboard's been stained, and maybe the neck back here, too. They did the entire neck, if they did. But, uh, if anyone knows what kind of wood that is, I don't know. I just, uh, I can't see it well enough. The grain is hard to see because of the type of finish, the way they did the finish. I kind of wonder maybe if they stained the whole entire body with something. You know, you just can't see the grain very good in it. But if anyone knows what that is, maybe you can tell the rest of us. But uh, it's got some runs in that finish too. I've seen one on the front there. I'm trying to use that light to our advantage, but I don't think you're going to be able to see it. Regal used several different types of woods and uh, the indications are this guitar is very very old and I'm guessing maybe it could possibly be a 20s or 30s model according to the bracing and the, you know just what I see and that one inlay that dot inlay that's different from the other two I think that's the one that was replaced these other two if you watch the other video the first video I showed you they have like a circle with the inlay or something in the middle. I think those are probably the original ones. Who knows, man. If an old guitar like this could talk, it would be unbelievable the things it could tell you. So uh, anyways, I'll see you guys on the next uh, part three. And we'll take this action down. I hope uh, somebody learned something, got something out of this video. And we'll uh, see you on part three. We're going to hear her sing after we get this this bridge shaped down, get the action, so, you saw how high it was, I mean it's unplayable, get it down at least enough to where we can play it, we have no truss rod adjustment, so you know, all we can do, the nut action seems to be okay now, all we can do is just bring the uh, action down back here at the bridge, it's enough, I think it will be, because it's a, it's a huge bridge, plenty of room there, I have to pull those uh, placement pins out to sand off the bottom of the bridge, anyways I'll see you on part three. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks to the new subscribers. Man, hang around. We're going to have a lot of fun. And you old guys that's been here and gals for a long time. Hang around. It's all coming. Cheers to you.